economy of tomorrow if the price of oil collapsed again, just like it did in 2008. This video contains some eye-opening graphs for you to understand the recent price behavior of oil and where it's headed. If you want to be informed, then let's go. This chart compares the historic prices of oil and stocks over the last three decades. The black line is the price of oil and the red line is S&P 500 stock index. Notice the period between 1995 and 2000. It was the period of strong economic growth in the US and most parts of the world. But during the time the stock market skyrocketed, the oil prices remained flat. So what happened? People didn't use much oil during this economic boom? No, the price stayed stable because OPEC countries were pumping more oil to meet increased demand. But most importantly, the Wall Street was not speculating with the oil price. Now, take a look at the price from 2009 till present. Can you tell the difference between the black and the red lines? I couldn't. In fact, the correlation between S&P 500 and the oil prices was so great that statisticians would kill for it. So what the heck is going on here? Is the world consuming more oil than 10 years ago? See the answer on the next slide. The blue line on this chart shows the average prices of oil from 2001 through 2010. The pink line represents average daily consumption of oil by two-thirds of the world. As you can see, the demand moves in a tight range from 45 to 55 million barrels a day. And it remains at the same level it was 10 years ago. But look at the blue line again. It rose from $19 to $130 in 2008 and fell to $30 in the same year. Did, just ask yourself, did the demand for oil swing so violently to justify these kind of price moves? The answer must be no. Both stocks and oil prices have been rising thanks to a speculative frenzy fueled by cheap credit. My theory is that the oil price has become a speculative asset since 2000 because its price has lost touch with its fundamentals. If you watched my previous video about oil price peak back in early March, you will understand why I predicted that the oil price peaked in February, February 2012 at $110 and that it would drop to $30 once again. What is really interesting is that the oil price has become a lone wolf. For example, natural gas is another energy resource whose supply is limited. The number of cars that run on natural gas instead of petrol has grown significantly in the last 10 years. A lot of oil-fired power plants have been replaced by natural gas-fired power plants. But the price of natural gas still declined. This happened because the production has increased as well. The same must be true about oil, whose production responds to demand. For example, the oil and gas prices rose and fell together up until 2009. But their prices diverged from 2009. Technical analysts call this a bearish sign for, for oil. If you worship the peak oil theory, there is a chance that you will accuse me of being ignorant about the diminishing oil reserves. I know. This chart shows you the proven US crude oil reserves, which is the green line, and the nominal price of oil, which is the red line. The peak oil theory claims that the proven US oil reserves peaked in 1970 and then have been falling since then. But notice that the price of oil is not well correlated to the amount of reserves. Let me explain why the peak oil theory is flawed. First, the estimated amount of reserves is biased by the level of oil price. For example, when the price was high in 2007, the estimated reserves were lower, but they were raised in 2009, after the price of oil collapsed. The fact is, no one knows the exact amount of existing oil reserves, let alone potential ones in the Gulf of Mexico or under the Arctic Ocean, or in the oil sands of Canada, Kazakhstan or Russia. 
30 years ago, no one was talking about oil sands and in, on the oil reserves in the Arctic Ocean. Secondly, the peak oil theory fails to properly recognize natural decrease in consumption uh, due to fuel efficiencies and alternative energy sources. Yes, the oil reserves may be limited after all, but there are alternative energy sources that are growing rapidly. Solar power has become a reality. The cost of solar photovoltaic modules are down 70%. This means that soon solar power may no longer require any government subsidies and could thrive on its own. Solar power now is more efficient than oil power, oil fuel plants. It will soon reach parity with natural gas. Solar is growing rapidly at an annual compounded rate of 65%. Based on Moore's law, solar could compete even with coal by 2018. Further, electric cars could completely change the energy landscape because of zero dependence on oil. Here's how. As you can see, nearly 50% of oil is used in transportation. This means the demand for oil will largely depend on what kind of cars we drive. For example, imagine what would happen to the demand for oil if all cars went electric, went electric in the next 10 years. Now the key question is, is there enough oil until all of this happens? According to the US Energy, US Energy Information Administration, at the end of 2007, the global oil reserves were 1.2 trillion barrels. But two years ago, the estimated reserves were higher by more than 100 billion barrels. Based on the US estimates, the world uses on average 30 billion barrels or less of oil every year. Now, take the lower number of 1.2 trillion and divide by 30 billion. You have 41 years worth of oil, even when you, even when you ignore the fact that the global demand for oil has been falling recently. So, there's certain certainly plenty of time for alternative energy sources to replace oil. In sum, this could be the beginning of the end for oil, both in terms of its price and consumption. Subscribe and stay tuned.